Hello from the Lube Supplier Store in Stanley, Wisconsin. I wanted to go through and cover the differences in the Gravely Pro Turns and specifically we are going to focus on what's different between the 100, 200 and 400 series. Now they do make a Pro Turn, uh, what we'll call the base model Pro Turn. Uh, they have one that's not in this diagram also called the Pro Turn Z. Um, the reason that we're going to focus on the 100, 200, and 400 in this video is these are what I consider the top quality uh, machines from Gravely. So whether you get a 100, a 200, or a 400 series machine, uh, you're really not getting a notable or significant difference in quality between these. They all have the lifetime warranty deck and frame and a five-year machine warranty. Uh, slightly different uh, hour limits on that, but the first two years on all three of them have unlimited hours, uh, and then it's 1,000, 1,250, and 1,500, respectively, for the 100, 200, and 400 series machines uh, for the total hour limit over the five years. Uh, but fundamentally, from a quality standpoint, these three models are going to be the same. So what we really want to understand is what's different then if they're not uh, different in quality what is actually different between them and so that's uh, the purpose of this video and what I want to cover I'm also going to give you my opinion on the best uh, combination of engine uh, and machine uh, in these three models and uh, the reasons why uh, I feel that way so uh, we will start with the 160 um, now the 160 again is going to come with the X Factor 2 lifetime warranty deck uh, and frame. You're going to get the big beefy front casters. Uh, these are significantly larger than the casters that you would get on, uh, say, a, a Pro Turn Z or an HD. I'm going to come over here and kind of come down. It's a little tough to get a perspective, but you can see that caster. And then we'll come to the Pro Turn Z, and you see this caster. These are, uh, again, significantly uh, larger than what you'd find on many competing brands. But uh, within the Gravely lineup, uh, once you get to the 100, 200, and 400, that series, those three machines have um, notably uh, heavier construction. Uh, so the deck on these is the 7-gauge uh, steel deck and a lot of times those numbers are thrown around loosely um, the reality is the the gauge matters certainly but also uh, things like the uh, side of the rub rail um, the thickness of the steel uh, throughout the deck construction and the method of construction in, in terms of uh, you know how it is supported uh, around the the spindles and and that kind of thing uh, incidentally we showed this in another video but I'm going to show the, uh, the spindle here. Uh, Gravely's XL spindle, uh, they come with a three-year unlimited hour warranty. Uh, these are uh, cast iron housing on the spindles. They're actually a completely maintenance-free sealed bearing spindle. Um, they've been a, a, just a fabulous spindle for us. We still have yet to have a customer come in with a, a bad spindle since they've uh, came out with this uh, system and it's nice not to have to worry about maintenance uh, and be able to have some confidence in in your deck uh, components so big question on this model what engine to go with there's primarily three choices you have the Kohler the Kawasaki and the Yamaha so right here we have the Yamaha, uh, this is going to be a larger displacement engine um, and more powerful than the Kawasaki, which uh, I think many people would argue is a little more proven. So this Yamaha model, this block, uh, has been out for a little while. Um, you know, the, the Yamaha Zero Turn uh, engine is something that they've been uh, working on for a number of years before it launched. It basically launched in 2016, uh, and the uh, initial models were an EFI only. So this model 
is the first one available from Yamaha with a carburetor. Uh, so this is using uh, more or less the same foundation, uh, but it's uh, offering a carburetor uh, versus a fuel injection, and that's helping to uh, get the price down a little bit more affordably. Um, there are some unique features aside from just the fact that it's a larger engine and has more horsepower. Uh, the mechanical design of this engine is a more efficient design. So this is sort of the latest, greatest in technology from Yamaha uh, for a carbureted engine. And that efficiency actually brings a noticeable fuel economy benefit. Even though it's a carbureted engine and not an EFI engine, the fuel economy of this Yamaha is uh, better than the fuel economy in the Kawasaki. When we've ran these head to head, the Yamaha uh, noticeably uses less fuel. We're finding uh, in that 15 to 20 percent range, even though it has more, more horsepower, you're looking at approximately three more horsepower. There are a couple of other nice features uh, that we notice. The Yamaha has a oil cooler that comes stock. Uh, it has a stainless steel exhaust. Um, the Kawasaki uh, would be like a FX1000. You'd have to get up into that neighborhood to get a integrated oil cooler um, as a stock feature. Now these do both use identical uh, oil, or excuse me, air filter systems, the two-stage commercial air filtration from uh, Donaldson. Um, you will see some other small differences though. The, the Yamaha has a cast uh, aluminum intake where the Kawasaki is a rubber intake. Um, now, in saying these uh, differences or identifying these differences, it may seem that we are leaning toward the Yamaha, and, and I am perhaps a little bit partial to that model, but I will say this Kawasaki FX730 is just a bulletproof workhorse engine. So the big advantage Kawasaki has in this uh, model is the fact that you don't have to wonder. That, that's not a new engine. It's on all kinds of machines and all kinds of brands, and it just is a top performer, um, highly reliable and trustworthy. You know what you got, and you can go to any place in, in the country that does small engines, and they're going to have all the parts for that engine. Uh, Yamaha being not new to engines, but newer to the zero turns, you're going to have less uh, options for viewer support, uh, but there is a lot to like. Uh, about this engine and when you mow with it uh, it puts a smile on your face a lot of power in, in that platform there is a Kohler option also available in this um, uh, you know there's absolutely nothing wrong with the uh, Kohler engine uh, but uh, our uh, opinion here is that the Kawasaki and Yamaha are the uh, best choices for this particular uh, chassis the uh, Kohler does actually show higher horsepower, but in an actual application uh, when you're mowing, the Kawasaki and Yamaha feel stronger. Um, so my pick for the 100 series uh, in a 60-inch deck, which is the, the most popular way we sell it, would be uh, a 50-50 with the Kawasaki or Yamaha. I know it's not a good answer, but we... Uh, offer them either way to customers. Uh, the Yamaha is a little bit more expensive, so that may influence uh, a person's decision making. Now when you switch to a 200 or a 400 model, uh, again, you're really not getting notable quality differences, it's more feature differences. So we wanna help uh, identify what those feature differences are. Uh, for starters, the physical chassis is larger so the distance between these two main frame rails the size of that um, access panel it's just all bigger uh, this is just a larger frame machine uh, it's wider it's going to come with larger tires i'm going to fold this flap down and let you get a sense maybe a little bit of the difference in tire size um, the uh, transmissions are also uh, different and that's one of the biggest differences when you switch from the 100 to the 200 you're going from a hydro gear 3400 uh, transmission to a hydro gear 5400 transmission so uh, a lot of people will say the difference is there's really just speed but speed is uh, more of a byproduct it's a completely different transmission it's a larger transmission physically it's just bigger heavier 
the 3400 is approximately 35 pounds uh, for the transmission uh, per, per side and the 5400 is nearly 60 pounds so I mean it's a pretty notable size difference in the transmission you're going from a max torque of 500 foot pounds out of that uh, transmission on the 3400 to about 700 max torque on a 5400 um, and the uh, displacement of the cc's uh, of the pump and wheel motor um, that are integrated into those transaxles are are larger and as they would say in the uh, car world there's no uh, replacement for displacement when you're looking for power uh, so there is a, a notable uh, power increase that comes with just that physical size increase and then the uh, max speed is quite a bit higher depending on the configuration uh, the way these are configured the 3400 is at its max capacity which is 10 miles an hour and the gravely in the 200 and 400 configure the 5400 series transaxle to run at 13 miles an hour which actually isn't uh, the max capacity of that unit but uh, the way it's configured on these models it's a 13 mile an hour uh, transmission and from a percentage standpoint 10 to 13 it's a 30 percent increase in wheel speed so that's definitely something uh, that you would notice also um, there is one other thing that you could make a case as a quality difference um, the clutch the pto clutch uh, when you go to a 200 and a 400 you're getting the ogura 3.5 uh, gt model which versus the 2.5 in the 100 series so there's a couple of other uh, smaller differences there now features is the biggest difference we talked about the transmission the larger tires the fuel tanks are also bigger on the 200 and 400 you're going to have a combined fuel capacity of 13 gallons on these models versus 10 gallons on the 100 series uh, also um, the seat uh, changes uh, from the the 200 to 400 um, and, and there's several differences I guess that all fall in the category of comfort so I'm going to show you for starters uh, on the 200 versus the 100 some differences in the way um, it's constructed that impacts the comfort so if we look at a 100 and we look at the engine mount and look at the frame and how the engines mounted to the frame there's basically a rigid pan and I'll come over here and show you on the Yamaha as well you have a rigid uh, engine mount plate that is uh, mounted to the frame and you can just see that's a solid mount when you go to a 200 you'll see that this engine mount uh, is actually a pan that is suspended or hung off of the frame with uh, some soft mounts or kind of a rubber uh, or neoprene type uh, bushing or uh, just allows the vibration to be isolated uh, from the operator so that is one of the the differences in comfort uh, the seats are basically the same between the 100 and the 200 uh, but the frame uh, under the seat is different you will notice that that is mounted up a little bit higher your legs will be bent a little bit differently versus underneath that one uh, you can kind of see that the, the 200 is going to be a little taller and so you'll feel a little more stretched out uh, on that machine now when we go to the 400 and actually I'll, I'll mention one other difference in comfort if you look at the foot platform on a 100 it's a uh, solid steel platform for your feet with punched uh, traction knobs there that in the steel if we look at the 200 it has the punch traction knobs and it's solid steel but you'll notice that there is a soft mount on the front there's a seam around here and so that whole front section is kind of floating in a soft mount so it gives you some additional comfort uh, for the operator now uh, the rear is not soft mounted the same way that the front is it's it's uh, got the hinges there uh, and it's basically rigid mounted on the hinges for the uh, lid that opens to access your deck and belts that's one of the differences when we go to a 400 you have this front soft mount but also 
the back, the hinges are inset and you end up with a little smaller tray here instead of it being full width, a little smaller access hatch. And then the back is also mounted on soft mounts. So that uh, adds a, another element of comfort on the 400. You have, of course, the air ride seat, which is a, a spoil you real fast kind of feature. Onboard air compressor integrated into the seat. Really a nice option. And then you will also notice that the knob uh, system to change the deck height is a rapid knob uh, system that's very uh, quick to, you can pick whatever deck height you want and, and just a quick flip of the knob where you'll have the same uh, pin style system on the 200 and the uh, 400. Another difference on the uh, 400 is that you're switching same size tire, but it becomes a radial tire. Uh, so this is going to be better at uh, hill holding, less sidewall roll, and it uh, brings a little bit of comfort uh, to the machine. Um, you know, it, ride quality uh, is improved a little bit as well. Now. On engine selection for the 200 and the 400, our pick on the 400 is the Yamaha EFI. Uh, this is a 33 horse Yamaha. This machine you can also get in a Kawasaki FX1000, which is a 35 horse. Uh, but the Yamaha outperforms the Kawasaki when it comes to torque, even though it has less horsepower. And the fuel economy difference is monstrous. It, this is uh, one of the most uh, efficient kind of fuel sipping engines that are available and uh, just makes all kinds of power when it uh, gets into that thick grass and is under a heavy load that torque really uh, shows its face and, and the engine uh, really stands up. Now when you uh, are in the 200 series, our pick is the Kohler. Uh, we feel that to go from a 100 to a 200 and not go all the way to a 400 um, is really for a person who is looking to pick up those few differences of a little bit of extra comfort, but primarily the transmission upgrade and sort of the, the bigger frame, larger tires, um, that kind of thing. The, even the front tires on the the 200 are going to be a little bigger. They use the same front caster, but you'll notice on the 200 and 400, it's mounted in the bottom bolt on that wheel fork, or the bottom hole on the wheel fork, and that's to accommodate the larger tire size. If you look at the 100, it's in the top hole, and that's a smaller diameter tire. Uh, so there's uh, some ride improvements that come with that tire diameter. Uh, this Kohler ZT740, it's a good, reliable, uh, nice starting engine, and it performs well. We've had no issues with them. Um, but we are a fan of Kohler, and we think they make uh, some great engines. Um, and for this model, it really helps keep the price uh, more appropriate to um, kind of that gap uh, purchase that someone might be looking for. If they're looking at the Yamaha or Kawasaki on a 160 um, and but they want to get some of these features of the 200 but not jump all the way to the price of a 400, uh, this Kohler really allows you to get good performance, get into the 200 features without uh, breaking the bank. Now if you say, well, if I was going to go all the way to a 200, then I would want uh, the more expensive engine with it, if you're going to get a, a FX Kawasaki or a Yamaha EFI, that's going to put the price of the 200 up high enough where we feel that you may as well spend that little bit extra money, you're already that close, get the more powerful uh, engine, the FX1000 or, or the uh, Yamaha EFI uh, 33 horse, and then get the other benefits of the additional comfort with the air ride, the radial tires. Um, and a, a more comfortable foot plate. So those are our picks for uh, 
100, 200, and 400, your best buys are going to be the Yamaha or Kawasaki 100. I will note that the Yamaha is only available uh, for 2018 anyway in the 60-inch deck. So if you wanted a 52-inch or other deck size, um, that's not an option. Uh, also on the uh, 200, we are picking the Kohler. Uh, another reason I will just mention while we're talking deck sizes is the 200 is available in a 72-inch deck. So that's uh, an option that isn't available in the 100. So if you were looking for that 72-inch deck, um, this is going to be the most affordable way to get to that, that point. And then the uh, Bulletproof Yamaha EFI, fabulous engine and, and our top pick uh, in the 400. Uh, this is a machine that we sell all kinds of them and people absolutely love them. Uh, the comfort is second to none and the fuel economy is also second to none. So thanks again, Loop Supplier Store in Stanley, Wisconsin, loopsupplierstore.com. Give us a call uh, and we uh, can deliver nationwide. Thank you much.